My name is Usha Patel. Welcome to The Path, a series sponsored by Keystone Partners Group. The Path is designed to share with you how you could go from no business to becoming a successful real estate agent. Today, I have Jared Moyer with me, and I'm so excited as he actually is going to share with you how he went from zero transactions to 60 transactions in just two years. Jared, thank you so much sure. for being here today. Yeah, glad to be here. So um, let's really talk about, let's just jump right in. So you started real estate two years ago mm -hmm. and you're already this year closing just over 7 million in volume. Uh, yeah, well, it'll probably be 13 or 14, somewhere right in that range. So that's 13, uh, I, I, 13 to 14 million mm -hmm. in volume. Mm -hmm. So my information was absolutely incorrect. <laughs> so 60 transactions, 13 to 14 million in volume. Mm -hmm. So tell us for everyone listening today, um, let's really uh, go from when you first got started. Okay. What was it that really caused you to really focus on the success that you're having? Um, I guess it was, so I was in corporate America. I started uh, in a big pharmaceutical company and basically started as a, I guess, like office maintenance, like floor sweeper, basically, or trash guy. And just kind of went up the ropes, went to school at night and basically climbed all the way up to like manufacturing supervisor in the viral vaccine industry, um, still in pharmaceuticals, and then just got to the point where I wasn't having as much fun. And I've always done real estate investing. So I'm like, you know, I'm like, real estate's probably not a bad route to go. So I talked with my wife about it and she was totally on board. So got the support of her. So we basically started looking at different options in the real estate world and real estate sales just kind of made sense. So she's like, all right, we'll go for it. So kind of started looking at a couple different options and then came across a couple buddies that are in the mortgage side of things. And they introduced me to KPG or um, Keystone Partners Group. So kind of got involved with a little bit of what they had going, learned that they had a lot of, I guess, learning and education at the actual, um, I guess, programs of what KPG offers. And that's how I kind of got, I guess, um, tied in with, with Keller Williams and KPG. So right. um, basically took the move, quit 100% of corporate America, which was probably a little bit risky. So, um, but we were kind of set, my wife and I were set for that. So we knew that it was going to be a, probably a little bit of a slower start, but that's kind of how I got, I guess, my big why really, because I knew I wanted to just kind of get in, try to do what I did in, in uh, I guess we'll call it the, the different type of a job that I had, because um, mm -hmm. I've never done sales before. Right, so. right, right. So not, you know, real estate, with my experience, there's mm -hmm. not, there's a good portion of people that do start Full time, but there's mm -hmm. also a lot of people that um, have, um, you know, a dual career situation. Mm -hmm. So for your situation, um, for everyone listening, um, I know you got started full time. Mm -hmm. Did you have, um, you know, a good financial buffer? Did you budget for um, knowing that in real estate, you know, sales could take you, you know, 30, 60, 90 days before mm -hmm. payday. So yeah. how quickly, first of all, how much of that buffer did you allocate for finances? And then how quickly did you get in, uh, into production? Um, so I buffered about six months, six to seven months. Okay. I mean, I, um, and I could have probably gone longer that, than that, but I just wanted to say, all right, six months is really my like real cutoff where I'm going to okay. be like, okay, we better start thinking a little bit differently here. Okay. Um, getting into production, I did pretty quickly. I started mid to late May of 2014. Yeah, 2014. Wow, it's crazy to think. Yeah. And um, got into my first closing was the end of July. So I had a couple at the end of July, a couple in August. And so you pretty much wrote a contract very quickly mm -hmm. of, now were, were your contracts from contacts that people you knew mm -hmm. or um, a did lot you already have people who said they wanted to buy a house because a lot of people get into real estate because mm -hmm. you know that's usually the case? Yeah, it was funny. So I just kind of had a very large sphere of influence or a lot of contacts okay. and reached out to a lot of them. So. When I, I started my Facebook page, like a professional page, so okay. I was actually off of Facebook for probably four or five years and I got back on Facebook right when I started real estate and started a professional page and just started reaching out to anybody and everybody that I knew. So, 
And, uh, and it seemed to work really well. My first listing and actually first sale came from Facebook. So it came from, from somebody who you knew. They, yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. So they liked my Facebook page and I just wrote them a quick note, said, hey, thanks for liking my page. Okay. If you ever need help with real estate or know anyone, just let me know. And within like a week, she got back to me and she goes, actually, I want to sell my house. So, so hers was an investment and she lived out in Pittsburgh and her friends were going to be, I guess, buying a home. So I got both the sale of her home and then the purchase of her renters. So it just kind of worked out pretty, pretty well. So I really think for everyone listening on the show, it's really important to build a database and build mm -hmm. relationships and really reach out to a lot of people. What I've found with a lot of the training that I've done and a lot of coaching, that's one of the things that, um, you know, sometimes people actually tend to resist. Um, what's your advice for everybody listening today? Just to just ask everybody and talk to everyone. I mean, yeah. maybe not aggressive in the sense where, oh, give me sales, give me sales. Right, but it's right. just... I guess I had a, maybe a little bit of an easier transition because people knew that I was involved in real estate. But yeah. then again, the people that I was getting business from or still am getting business from is people that trusted me, which is my sphere. So I think as long as you kind of go in with that kind of mentality, like looking and willing to help, people, they want to see you succeed because yeah. they know that you were, that I was in a different career and they knew that I wanted to really succeed in real estate. Um, and as long as you're willing to help, they know that and they can see that too. Yeah. So they yeah. can kind of read you. You know, that's one of the things I always say is that people will do business with people that they know, like, and mm -hmm. trust. And you hit it really right on the nail there. So they already trusted you. So mm -hmm. for, um, you know, ongoing now, um, mm -hmm. you know, what type of things are you doing in your business? Um, obviously, you know, it's really important to build some really, really good foundational systems mm -hmm. and tools. Um, who are the people that you are involved with surrounding in your office that really mm -hmm. supported all of that? I mean, it was our team leader, first and foremost. I mean, he's the first person I technically met in the office that I work out of. And he was a huge influence because he kind of got me into the business, introduced me to our, our coaching program, which was Jason. And those were like the two probably most influential people at my office. There's a lot of people outside of the office that helped. Um, from people that are all the way up to our leadership at KPG, all the way to fellow agents. I mean, it was just one of those deals where you had anywhere from the leadership to other agents to people in our office that are leading our office. I mean, every. I mean, the biggest ones well, I would definitely say is the, the the pro coach. He was he was great. So right, I remember like my first meeting. He's like, "What do you, what do you want to make, or what do you want out of real estate?" And I just kind of threw a number out there because I'm like, "Well, I just came. This is what I made at my old job. This is kind of what I want to do." And he just used the, the systems of what um, both Keller Williams and KPG uses. And he's like, well, here's how many contacts here you have to make. Here's how many calls you have to make. Here's how many conversations or whatever it might have been. And I looked at that. I'm like, oh, my God, that is a lot. <laughs> but then when you start doing it, it was really simple. So your coach really took the time to mm -hmm. um, know what it is um, that you really wanted to do with your business and helped you design your business plan. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So he kind of, and also I guess he was asking like the why behind it. He's like, All right, well, why do you want to make that much? Like, what if you said that much and you only made X? Like, would you still right. be able to survive or would you have to get another job or would you right. have to really push through? What would, what would be like, I guess, your financial thermostat is probably the, the best way to say it. Yeah. So we absolutely, that's one of our commitments at Keystone Partners Group to be able to have a coach that will help you expand mm -hmm. your thinking. Um, for every agent, that's our mm -hmm. focus. And um, so when it really comes down to you, was it um, from the very beginning, you started focusing on your business plan, how many sales, how many transactions, and really how many people that you would need, um, you know, in terms of contacts mm -hmm. to be able to build the business that you wanted to see happen? Yeah, I... Um... I didn't quite trust the model at first because okay. like I didn't and I didn't. So I'm like, well, if that's what you really have to do, I think these people work with me, like knowing my sphere. Mm -hmm. But then when I started getting into it, I realized like I got into production pretty quickly and then I had a little bit of a lull mm -hmm. and I just went back to the systems. Once I went back to the systems of how many contacts and how much business you wanted to make, right. everything just kind of fell right into place. So I kind of attributed that back to my pro coach because he's like, look, you're, you were doing it very well in the beginning, not that you're not now, but he's like, if you refocus on what we've talked about, you're, you're going to do what you want to do and you're going to be successful at it. So I just kind of took that as 
pretty strong advice and and it seemed to work really well and it still works right now. Yeah. So. so one of the six personal perspectives is to go from being entrepreneurial to being mm -hmm. purposeful. Um, and uh, it really sounds to me like your coach really helped you go from your natural ability of mm -hmm. working in your strengths and yet also, you know, getting some more purpose mm -hmm. in terms of your actions and habits to get you to where you wanted to go. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and he asked, he's like, what do you really like to do for fun? And I'm yeah. like, I'm in a bocce league. I play golf. I go to breakfast almost every day. So he's like, if you have to do all those things, you might as well try to get some business out of it. Right. And every single one of those groups of spheres, I guess that we would call it, right. I've gotten a lot of business from each of them. So once yeah. you just kind of focus and you be a little bit more purposeful as to who you are and what you do, um, it just kind of starts naturally coming to you as well because you're not, it's more of like a soft sell because people, mm -hmm. they already trust you and they already like you. And then once you see that, or once they see that you start doing a little bit of business and they realize, oh, Jared really does know through conversations what he's talking about or what he's doing, um, you, you, the business seems to just really come to you at some point, so, yeah. which is fun. So you get the come list me calls. <laughs> yeah, every now and again. Yeah, not yeah. that easy sometimes. <laughs> That's Those always a great thing in real estate, yeah, yeah. So um, I know you mentioned that you have a really good sphere of influence. Mm -hmm. um, um, what does your database look like? And, um, you know, how are you working that database now? Mm -hmm. um, obviously, so you've done, um, again, as a reminder, about 14 mm -hmm. million in business and about 60 sales, mm -hmm. right? Uh, towards the end of this year, that's what I'll be. I, I probably answered that a little bit yeah. incorrect in the beginning, yeah. So okay, that's well, what... that's, you know, we it's it's always good to have that goal so that yeah. we can always be looking forward to where we're aiming at. Mm -hmm. So um, how, how many people in your database for you to be able to reach that goal? Right now, I have just over, I guess, about 1,700 in my okay. database. Okay. Um, so some of them are, I, I'd say, like a very strong database. I'm probably right around 1,500, 200. Okay. There might be a couple floaters out yeah. there, yeah. but um, which you have to constantly revisit, too. I mean, I it was one of those kind of situations this year where it got extremely busy, and you kind of you kind of have to go back to the basics sometimes where I have to scrub through the database. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, that, I have a very strong database. And I guess as far as how I work with them, it's I do drip like 33 touch programs, mm -hmm. which is like just constantly reaching out to them, whether it's through email, whether it's a phone call, whether it's a text message or like a, a Facebook post or something like that designated towards that person. Um, and one thing that my team implemented this year is that we're going to just have like kind of a client appreciation party. So just as an easy way to kind of get back and hang out with them and just kind of right. Relive some good memories, so it's because uh, when you go through the process of buying a home, it's not the most enjoyable. But like you just try to keep it light and fun, and mm -hmm. it um and they always seem. I figure with a big enough client appreciation party, it means I'm doing something right. So, <laughs> um, you mentioned my team, mm -hmm. so it, you know it's just your second year. Do you? Mm -hmm. What does your team look like? Um, so I have an assistant. Okay. Um, so I have an assistant, Megan, and then I have a buyer specialist, and I just hired a listing specialist. So, right. so the 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 person that's your uh, administrator mm -hmm. is that the person that's really doing a lot of the uh, maintenance of the database? She is, yeah, okay. she is, yeah. So yeah. she's really kind of come into form the last month or two. I mean, because I hired her back in March, and she's just like it's kind of get her used to the systems. I mean, real estate is a huge. Um, it's, there's a lot of responsibility and a lot of things going on. So I just kind of wanted to just kind of chip away at the ice and then eventually kind of let her take more responsibility. So now it's just kind of coming back towards the end of this year, which is going through like the maintenance of some of the, the sphere and the contacts and some of the systems that we have. So she, she runs my show. <laughs> she keeps me focused. <laughs> Absolutely. So, so I think for the viewers, we may have people listening today that are brand new. Mm -hmm. So I, I really think the message is it really is possible for someone even within two years to really mm -hmm. um, do a lot of business and to be able to um, start building to create mm -hmm. a much bigger business. With um, So what is your vision for your business? Um, so the vision, I, I haven't kind of quite capped it off as to how big I'd like to get. I just like to say, you know, let's let's put certain like goals within years or months in time, or uh, I guess as far as goals that way. So I mean, the the goal this year was to put my team in place with I had my assistant, I had my buyer, and then I had my listing specialist. So the goal is to kind of end around sixty units, which. 
Um, we'll, we'll definitely hit that, if not more. And I know that it just took a little bit of while or a little bit of time to kind of get, I guess, in the right motion of getting everybody like in their place and their positions. So next year in 2017, we're looking to do about 150 units. Is kind of that's the goal right now. That's a stretch goal, but um, I wouldn't. I would like to say that if we do everything that we need to do, we should be more than fine. So none of this comes without hard work. Correct, yeah. Um, and, you know, when you first got started and compared to that time to now, mm -hmm. um, how many hours of work did you put in? You know, where do you get this discipline from? Okay. Um, so I grew up on a farm. Ah. So that's, I guess that's where I probably get a little bit of my work uh, ethic. Work ethic. So, yeah. and I guess the thing I always learned from my dad or my grandfather, it was a dairy farm, is you don't really end work until you're done work. So whether you're done at 4 p.m. or you're done at 9 p.m., right. um, you really you're, you're just going to continue to work because you that's kind of what we're up for. Yeah. So, um, and then I also I'm also a, a very avid golfer. So it's one of those deals where you you set a goal and you practice till you hit it, and then you go home or you go to the next practice session. So I guess that in the real estate end of things is I said okay, well here's what I need to do. So whether it takes me 20 minutes to do or 30 hours to do, I'm just gonna I mean I guess I might not stay up 30 hours in a row. <laughs> But um, yeah, just continue, just plugging away, just set your goals clear and just kind of work backwards. Begin with the end in mind saying, okay, here's what I want. And and that's where the pro coach, Jason, kind of came into play mm -hmm. where he's like, all right, well, here's what you want. Here's where you want to be. So let's work backwards from there. Yeah. So it's just kind of getting a clear idea of what you really want, which I guess with me in real estate, it did take a little bit of time to focus in exactly what the real estate business was yeah. um, and how to get there. But um yeah, I just attribute a lot of it back to the education and, and the pro coach. Yeah. So were there things that um, you learned uh, about, um, you know, doing things that perhaps you didn't want to do and yet, um, you know, your coach was like, this is this is something that is mm -hmm. required? Yep. Um, can you share with us an instance where perhaps your coach said, you know, had asked you to do things, mm -hmm. um, perhaps tracking? Yes. Um, you know, how was that in terms of resistance, accountability, mm -hmm. um, you know, that being one of the things that's important for success? Yeah. Oh, without a doubt, you have to track your numbers. Like whether it's one number or a thousand numbers you're tracking, you have to track them because yeah. if you can track them in the beginning, then you're going to you have a lot easier time tracking them when you're doing 10 transactions or 20 or 50 or 100 because if you don't start in the beginning you're not gonna you're gonna be in for a little bit more pain in the long run so he was so jason was really good at just making like we we called it tuesdays at two o'clock that was my time with jason okay. so you so, had a set time that you would meet yes. with your coach yeah and i never missed it i think i missed maybe one but i was on vacation so he's like oh we'll let you go so, <laughs> um but no, no penalty he, this time yeah no penalty exactly so no he was great i mean he like I said, he, he set up a plan for what we needed to do. And then some of, I guess, the instances where he's like, all right, well, in order to get there, he's like, you have your sphere, which I think at the time I might have had maybe 150 realistic, good people in my sphere. So he's like, all right, well, you know, there's 30 days in a month. Reach out to 15 people a day. And I'm like, 15 people a day? I'm like, I thought I just showed houses and like put <laughs> yard signs. I'm like, I don't get this. I'm like, this is not what I expected. So, That's right, yeah. Um, but then you quickly realize, you're like, wow, this is actually, this. so you'll call those people or if you don't have their phone number, you have their email. Um, if you don't have their email, there's Facebook, there's LinkedIn. There's so many ways to kind of reach people anymore. So I went through every possible way. If I didn't have their phone number, um, I wasn't calling them, but I was emailing them. So. And if I was able to somehow track somebody else down that knew that person, I get their number from that person. So I was very aggressive in that instance where I'm like, I don't want to go back to pharmaceutical job or a different type of role. So I'm like, I'm just going to focus on getting these numbers and getting what I need to do. So I guess to kind of tie back to that. So Jason's like, so, so after week one, he's like, so how did you do? I'm like, I made four calls. And I'm like, <laughs> he's like, so you're already like... 50 or 60 something behind the eight ball. I'm like, oh. So I didn't really, so I guess that being said, I really didn't like that feeling of someone following up with me and being like, you didn't do what you said you were going to do. Yeah, and, I, yeah. and I guess, I mean, and that's where he really just kind of realized he's like, all right, so Jared knows he has a good sphere. So now it's just maybe coaching him a little bit in the right direction of, all right, here's what you need to do. Here's what you may need to say. And he gave me the right things to say. And it just kind of, it became really natural. And, right. and people like to hear from you, especially if you're friends with them or their family or whatever it might be. Maybe some family. Like <laughs> so. Well, you really are a people person. I am, yeah. um, And yet, you know, um, social media, it seems like one mm -hmm. of the ways that um, you chose uh, in terms of building your business. Um, 
you know, I teach a class, 101 Ways to Lead Generate. Um, yeah. There's so many different ways of building a business. Mm -hmm. Um, for for yourself, um, what are the three avenues of building your business that you've chosen? Uh, social media, um, sphere, mm -hmm. and I'm a, I figure we have to eat, so I go to a lot of restaurants and just, I usually sit up at like the bar area or just a way where it's easier to interact because if it's just like a one-on-one, -on -one, there's people all around and you're not going to be able to talk to them. So I just find any possible way to talk to people. And um, so I guess I technically have four because I'm not used to wearing a suit. Usually I wear like a golf shirt or something. So I always wear my KW, um, I yeah. guess, logo. I don't wear the pin. I just wear like I get a bunch of shirts embroidered. Right. And mm -hmm. I guess in the last two years, I probably got three or four pieces of business from it. So it paid for my clothes for the next like 30 years. <laughs> That's a good piece of advice for everybody listening. Yes. Um, and also, I mean... You know, if you have something that you do naturally that mm -hmm. you enjoy doing, yep. uh, it also sounds like you you like playing golf. So, I do, yeah. Uh, I'm, you know, do you have a percent of business that you you have uh, gotten because of enjoying something you love doing with the people that you like? Yeah, well, so my only downside is I haven't played as much golf as I used to because I got kind of so roped into working. So the one plan I have for 2017 was to just join a club and. Basically, there's a group that plays Tuesdays and Saturday mornings at the club I'm going to join. So it's just, and it's all business guys. It's all either entrepreneurs or it's independent contractors, things like that. So I figured that would be a piece of my business in 2017 um, in the past. And I, I haven't tracked it close enough, but there's a lot of people I met through Goff that I've gotten, I would say, anywhere between eight and ten pieces of business from previous. Not just going out and playing and getting it that way, but just from them knowing me and then reaching back out through my sphere. So... You know, the, one of the words you said when we first got it, got started was fun. Yes. And, you know, it seems like fun is a big value for you. Mm -hmm. And even for the viewers, I mean, it just sounds like you're having fun yeah, doing absolutely. real estate, you know, as a business and a way of life for you. It is. It's a blast. I mean, I, I drink a lot of coffee, so I have a lot of energy, <laughs> which is not healthy. I do not recommend a lot of coffee. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, that was one of the things that, that Jason, my pro coach, and even like team leader or anyone in the, like basically the KPG organization, Keystone Partners Group organization, they're like, just, just have fun. Right. I mean, like, yes, you have to be serious in certain instances because you are managing someone's biggest, one of their bigger financial transactions. Right. So yes, that is serious, but they're like, just keep it light, keep it fun and just enjoy yourself. So I try to I try to keep that mentality, even when you have some, some things that might go a little bit awry, you just gotta kind of smile right. and say, you know, there's nothing that's gonna change here. All we can do is work through it. So I just try to maintain that. Yeah. So I still want to come back to how many hours did you used oh to work <laughs> when you first got started compared to now? Because I know you have a team mm -hmm. now. So do you actually have some leverage time perhaps to spend more mm -hmm. time with your family and still do more business? Um, mm -hmm. I think I'd like to, for our viewers to be able to understand that, you know, what, what does it take to have s success? It takes, so you have to have like the, I guess you have like what your end goal is. So that's like a want or a desire. So then once you have that, it's like, all right, let's focus on what I need to get there. And I mean, if you talk to any entrepreneur, usually, I, I can't say for everyone, but I mean, yeah, it's a lot of time and it's a lot of focus mm -hmm. and there's a lot of rejection and mm -hmm. there's a lot of failure. So I think once you can kind of overcome that and you just have like, let's call it the next mentality, um, it seems to work pretty well. So I guess to kind of answer the question of hours, I don't know, probably 80 to 100 um, is, was, is what I was doing in the beginning when I started because I just had zero desire for failure. I did not want to fail. I did not want to start in real estate and be one of the statistics where they're like, oh, I went back to doing part-time then back to a full-time job again. And, and real estate is a full-time job. I don't right. want it to sound like it's not because right. um, it is. If you, if you do it right and you treat it like a business, then it is a full-time job. So one of the way, and my wife, like, so lucky or lucky me, I should say, she was supportive. Yes. So she's like, you know what, you do what you need to do, and we'll, we'll just kind of take care of things as they come up. So having that as a background was, was huge. So what I did was the first year ish, I would say, I was doing 80 to 100 hours, and, and it wasn't always just calling, but it was out and about, shaking hands, meeting as many people as I possibly could, which was kind of a springboard to where I'm at now. So I realized, and, and even re reading through the Red Book, which is part of our education, like I think it's a requirement you should read the Red Book, The Millionaire Real Estate Agent. Mm -hmm. so, so I read that and I'm like, okay, so you got to, I guess, that plateau where you're hitting the ceiling. So then you kind of drop back off. I'm like, well, what's going to get me to the next 
step, basically. So I'm like, oh, let's hire an assistant. Right. So I'm like, all right. So I went from 80 hours, just just say, down to like maybe 45 or 50. Mm -hmm. And then you started creeping back up where you're getting busy. And I'm like, oh, shoot, now I'm back to 80 hours. So I'm like, now what do I do? Right. So I hired a buyer agent and was able to kind of take some of that weight off my shoulder. You still have a lot more work. It might not be meeting and out and about with people, but you're still working, answering calls from them and just kind of you're coaching and managing them at that point. Yeah. So I got to the point where I was hired her and then all of a sudden you start creeping up on hours again and it's like, okay, now I should really hire a listing specialist and you start leveraging. So now I'm probably at 60 hours a week right now. So, and it doesn't feel that way. It's a lot of fun and I, um, I like to work. Yeah. So to me, I, I don't really look at it as a job per se. It's more or less, mm -hmm. let's go have some fun and, and help some people out. So yeah. it's, it makes it a lot more enjoyable. I mean, because if I had to wake up and, and I, don't, I have an alarm set, I rarely even get to my alarm. Usually I'm up out of bed at like 5 and then I'm in bed by 11 or 12. So that's the conditioning from working on the farm. It is, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Although I have to admit, I was at a conference um, probably in the down market when I really mm -hmm. heard um, a speaker talk about if you really want to make it in real estate, you know, or any business for that matter, you know, wake up early, wake up one mm -hmm. hour early, wake up early and get to work early so mm -hmm. that you have the opportunity yep. uh, to build some good habits for success. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm yeah. probably usually the first one in the office and the last to leave. Yeah. So it's just, and I mean, I don't say that to be like, oh, look at me. It's just right. one of those deals where if like people do ask like, oh, how did you in the first couple of years do what you're doing in volume? I'm like, like a relentless desire to want to win and do well and help people and just you set your goals clear enough, you're going to hit them. As yeah. long as you do, like there are certain things that are in place and of course people only see the numbers, they don't see what goes behind the scenes. I mean, sure. when they might be at home on a Sunday or Saturday, I might be out and about working or whatever it might be. So Yeah, yeah. So um, professional growth, let's talk about that. Mm -hmm. um, how important is that um, mm -hmm. for the success of, of business and life? It's huge. It's absolutely huge. Um, I was very blessed with a good family to help me. Like I guess, like I mean, I had kind of your hardworking dad. So, and my mom stayed at home with myself, my brother, older brother, younger sister. So, we kind of learned a little bit of the work mentality. Mm -hmm. So, when I got into like a professional setting, um, I didn't understand so much the professional setting as much as I did hard work. And my dad's like, "Oh, you'll just learn the rest through the people that are there." I'm like, "Okay, sounds good." So, so. When I joined Keystone Partners Group, you just kind of started learning like, hey, if you want to really treat this like a business and be a good business owner, here's kind of the path of tra uh, trajectory I guess you would yeah. want to take. So they kind of laid out a very clear plan like, okay, do you want to be an individual agent? Mm, probably. Well, I guess to start, yes. yes. You have to start somewhere. Yeah. And um, they put me on the right path. So you go through the coaching and then they say, okay, well, now you're starting to do some volume. Mm. Let's help you get an assistant. So they helped me with hiring an assistant. And there are certain programs and trainings in place to kind of fight or find the right assistant. Um, and then basically I had Recruit Select, which is like another thing that um, Keystone Partners Group, like they basically just set up the whole vision as to what right. I needed to do. And they said, if you follow this model, you're not going to fail. Right. I mean, there's going to be bumps along the road, don't get me wrong. Sure. But they said, if you just continually follow this, educate yourself and teach yourself what you need to know. You're gonna be surrounded by people that do it, that have done it successfully, done it with people that have failed, but then have gained success out of it because you don't always succeed the first time. So right, yeah. um, so they just kind of put me on the right path and it, it kind of helped me project to where I am now and what I'm expecting to do in the future. Yeah, we have so much to be grateful for. Yes, with we Gary do. Keller writing the yes. book mm -hmm. and Dave Jang said though, for the millionaire real estate agent mm -hmm. with the models Yes, um, and following those models, I think, um, Definitely at Keystone Partners Group, we've been able to really utilize all the support to be mm -hmm. able to support our agents like yourself. It's yeah. fun, yeah. And we do like masterminds. I mean, which I never really knew what a mastermind was too much prior to, to Keller Williams or just Keystone Partners Group. They're like, hey, Jared, um, this was after like my first year in the business. I got a phone call and they're like, hey, we want you to join this mastermind. I'm like, Cool. What's I'm like I kind of figured I knew what it was, but not really. Yeah. And they're like, oh, it's all these like maybe top twenty percent um, agents that are kind of just working together to come up with different strategies or ideas, whether it's for listings or for buyers or just for investors you might work with. Like any way to just kind of gain additional business. Mm -hmm. And I guess that was what kind of was a big shock to me was like, wow, wait, we're all gonna we're all competing against each other, aren't we? And everyone's like, yes and no. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, because at the end of the day, how often do you really run into the same same people? And it yeah. might, if you start doing a lot more transactions, yeah. you will, but 
it's, it's not that bad and people genuinely want to see you succeed, yeah. whether it's a Keystone Partners group or your fellow agents in our group. I mean, right. it's, it's really cool, it's neat. So definitely find a great mastermind group mm -hmm. and how cool to be able to share some great ideas with each other yeah. um, to be able to support our community. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and just take, I always thought just, because the first mastermind I went to, I had like 20 ideas. I'm like, I'm going to do all these. And I'm like, I didn't do any of them. <laughs> so I'm like, well, that was a Pick waste. One. <laughs> yeah. So that's what I started doing. I just would go there with the intent of picking one or two, like one is a kind of like a substitute if number one didn't work and just slowly started implementing items into whether it's presentations or people I'm working with or clients or past clients. And it, it seemed to really boost my business. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's fun. And just learning from others, and it's a lot of fun. And it makes it more enjoyable because then when you're out and about, whether it's a community or you're um, putting an offer on a house or accepting an offer, you're, you might know who that person is. So it just makes it a little bit more of an enjoyable experience. So, so training, coaching, mastermind groups, what did I miss? Um, professional think. growth, um, having fun. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for um, just recently, um, my coach really, you know, as I was having my session with her, mm -hmm. um, she said, you know, everybody has superpowers yeah. <laughs> um, that really, you know, lead us to our success in life. Sure. And um, what is your superpower? Oh, my. What would you say? I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> you know, um, I guess I would say just the ability ability to have a lot of fun. I mean, like, to, so, I mean, I'm pretty good about taking situations that are pretty stressful mm -hmm. and just kind of blowing them over. Not that they're not important, but I, yeah. I'm i pretty good at just kind of calming and maybe it's an expectation setting too, but yeah. it's just, because um, people are stressed when they're buying or selling, especially mm -hmm. when they're like, hey, we have all of our stuff in our moving truck and we might have gotten settlement pushed back a day. Um, it's just really, maybe that is my superpower. I honest, I've never thought of that one before. That's a good question. And 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 I wanted to ask that question only because this was a, a recent coaching uh, session that I mm -hmm. had. And I think I would have said that myself too. So for the viewers, I think it's going to be really cool that they really yeah. look at themselves and perhaps even ask the people that are within their world yeah, exactly. uh, to be able to see what their superpowers are. I think we all have them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, just to wrap up our time today, mm -hmm. um, if there was one piece of advice you'd like to give to everyone listening today, mm -hmm. um, what would that be for them and their path for success? Um, I would say, I guess I kind of have two and it both revolves around coaching. So, don't miss your coaching appointments. That's like one. <laughs> I mean, they, they kind of joke when I started that. They're like, oh, yeah, don't miss your appointments. And like I took them very serious. I'm like, well, in reality, I'm like, if I'm going to do this coaching, I want to make sure that I do it right. So just take it serious. And I mean, there might be some weeks or even a month maybe where you struggle a little bit, but that's what they're there for. Right. Um, and then to second that, so I, I was, I guess, maybe 10 or 11 months in when I finished coaching. So I had like maybe a year where I didn't have any coaching. So... But I have a lot of mentors, people I try to get lunch with maybe once a week or once a month. So it's a group of different mentors. So I'd say definitely have a mentor, which is kind of in that same realm. And then I joined MAPS Coaching as well, which is or MAPS Mastery Coaching. Absolutely. And I'd say get there as quickly as you can. I mean, they will undoubtedly get you laser focused on what you want. And they'll, they'll just boost your business completely. So. And, and that's really what we do. Our goal mm -hmm. is to be able to have newer agents get started, work with a productivity coach. Yep. As soon as they get really, really, um, you know, good foundational and mm -hmm. really get coached to a level where they can now hire mm -hmm. a MAPS coach through Keller Williams. Exactly. Yes. And just stick to the systems. It's That's already right. there. We're not reinventing the wheel. So yeah. it's yeah. fun. Well, I so enjoyed our time today, Jared. Thank you so yeah, much anytime. for coming today. Yeah, anytime. And uh, for everyone listening today, um, I highly recommend that you uh, go back and listen to this again and take out some really good points that Jared has um, that you'd be able to use in your business. And tune in again um, because we have some really, really great people lined up so you can learn how you also could go from perhaps zero to 60 or whatever your goal is um, for success for yourself.